In today's video, I want to discuss the top 10 players I feel are most likely to have a major breakthrough season and really elevate their games for the upcoming 2019-2020 NHL season. I'll reveal my top 10 coming up next. Welcome back here to Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, today I want to talk about the top 10 players I feel are really due to have a breakthrough NHL season and really elevate their games and take things up a major level compared to where we've seen them play here in their recent past. Now, many of these players you're going to find are fairly young, still getting themselves established, and still have not reached their full ceiling and their full potential at the NHL. Now keep in mind as well, this is just my opinion on my players that I think are due for a breakthrough season. If you have some different players you feel are in that same category, then leave me some comments down below so we can discuss further. Now let's get started with my top 10 players. First up, we have Montreal Canadiens young forward Jesperi Kokaniemi, who debuted last year in the NHL after being drafted high in the first round of the 2018 NHL draft. Of course, many people thought he might not even play in the NHL last year, but the young Finnish forward actually had a pretty solid rookie year from Montreal showed a lot of potential, showed a lot of skill, and certainly had a fairly productive rookie season. I do think he's going to build upon that and really break through and take on a much bigger role with the Montreal Canadiens for the coming year. The Habs are a team that's on the rise. They barely missed the playoffs last year. They have a lot of other young players joining the team as well that are fighting for roster spots right now, including guys like Ryan Paling and Nick Suzuki. And this team is only going to get that much more skilled, that much more fast, and that much more fun to watch over the next couple of years. I really feel that just Pierre Kakaniemi has really improved a lot during his offseason training. Looks like he's added some muscle, so I do think he's going to really make some leaps and bounds and improve his play for the coming year and really break through to take on a much bigger role for the Habs for the 1920 season. Next up, we have Dominic Cahoon, now of the Pittsburgh Penguins, formerly of the Chicago Blackhawks. Had a pretty solid year in Chicago last year, putting up 37 points, but now he finds himself in a Pittsburgh Penguins team likely playing in a much more offensive role, getting a chance to hopefully play in a top six or probably top nine role. And I do think that Dominic Cahoon is going to take full advantage of that. I really like the addition of Dominic Cahoon to the Penguins lineup. Obviously, they had a lot of changes that they made throughout the current offseason. Of course, the Pittsburgh Penguins are a different looking team heading into the current season. And adding a guy like Dominic Cahoon and other younger players as well has certainly been a nice addition to the team. I really think Dominic Cahoon has a lot of talent, a lot of potential, and getting a chance to play with some of the strong offensive players in Pittsburgh are just going to bring out his talents that much more. And instead of having 37 points, I can really see him taking it up a level and maybe going up between 45 to 50 points, breaking through and really finding himself a solid role within the Penguins organization. Next up, we have Ottawa Senators forward Colin White, who just signed himself a six-year contract extension with the Senators during his current offseason. He was a restricted free agent. Of course, Colin White spent the last year as his first full season in the NHL. Prior to that, he had had a season where he went up and down between the NHL and the AHL. But last season, he had his first opportunity to really solidify himself as a full-time NHL player. I do think with all the transitions we've seen in Ottawa, with all the changes within their roster, Colin White should have a solid, consistent top six role within the Senators organization. I do believe that I have a lot of faith and confidence in his abilities, which is why they gave him that six-year contract extension for so you know a pretty significant raise over his entry-level deal. So I do think we're going to see some significant improvements from Colin White's game over the coming year. I think the fact that he's going to be able to play consistently with guys like Brady Kachuk, maybe Connor Brown, Drake Batherson, certainly going to help bring out his offensive abilities. And I do think Colin White's really going to improve his point totals and take on a much more bigger role with the Senators for the coming year. Next up, we have Minnesota Wild forward Ryan Donato, formerly of the Boston Bruins. Of course, he was traded to Minnesota late last year and certainly seemed to fit in quite nicely and had a solid end to his season. Ryan Donato, of course, was a, a Boston Bruins draft pick, played his college hockey, signed with the Bruins, come on, had a really hot start, but then cooled off, found himself traded over to Minnesota last year, but really picked things up and really got off to a hot start with the Wild as well. Now, the Minnesota Wild are a team that's lacking some offense, and we're certainly looking to add a lot of offensive firepower this past offseason. 
They had a few failed trades under former GM Paul Fenton that did not go through. Uh, be interesting to see how new GM Bill Guerin handles uh, maybe reshaping this roster a little bit. But they certainly had made some attempts at least uh, to gain some more offensive players. But I do think younger players like Ryan Donato will be able to seize a bigger role and really be able to improve and solidify themselves as solid NHL players. I honestly can see Ryan Donato uh, being a 20-25 to 25 goal scorer for the coming season and really be a nice improvement and have a breakthrough year for the Minnesota Wild. Next up, we have young forward Jack Roslovic of the Winnipeg Jets. Now, the Winnipeg Jets are a team that's in transition. They have a lot going on right now. There's a lot of uncertainty about the future. As I record this video, at least, forwards Patrick Laine and Kyle Connor remain unsigned. Dustin Bufflin is now suspended, pondering his future. There's certainly a lot more questions than answers when it comes to the Winnipeg Jets. Players like Roslovic have a major opportunity, I feel, to really take on a bigger role. I know Roslovic last year certainly did improve his play and get a, you know, a little bit more of an opportunity as well, but I think this is is really going to be the year where we see him really move up and really take on a much more significant role with the Jets organization. I really think longer term, he can be that number two center iceman that they're desperately looking for to really solidify the top two center ice spots. We've seen him go out the last two NHL trade deadlines and bolster their center depth at the deadline. And I think going forward, they may not need to do that because I think Ross Levick might be the answer there. And I really expect him to make some major leaps and bounds uh, to really improve himself and take on a bigger role with the Jets for the coming season. Next up, we have another Ottawa Senators forward, and that's Brady Kachuk, who himself, like just Perry Kakaniemi, was a high draft pick in the 2018 NHL draft, went straight to the NHL, had a solid rookie campaign, putting up 22 goals last year. Those 22 goals also came with him missing some time. He did have a couple of injuries last year as well. So I do expect Brady Kachuk to take some major steps forward this year. I think Brady Kachuk is going to have a fun time playing with a lot of the other younger players in Ottawa, have a healthy season where he can play all 82 games, hopefully, and we'll really see him elevate his game and take on a much bigger role within the Senators organization. Young guys like Brady Kachuk, Colin White, and Thomas Shabbat, who just inked an eight-year contract, are the big-time players for the future of this franchise. Uh, they've already got Shabbat and White locked up long-term. Brady Kachuk will likely be the next player to do a long-term deal. Hopefully, at least that's what the Senators are, are looking for. Uh, he still has one more year to go before they can do that. But if he can really break through this year like I think he can, likely become a 30-goal scorer in a sophomore season and then likely ink a long-term contract with the Senators next summer. Next up, we have Calgary Flames goaltender David Riddick. Now, many might feel that David Riddick kind of broke out and had a breakthrough season last year. And I guess to an extent, you can say that he did. But I really think he's going to continue to break through and really take things up here yet another notch. I think in this year, he's going to play even more games. Last year, I believe he played around 45 games. Well, this year, he's going to be expected to probably play around 60 games and really elevate his game that much more and take on a bigger role with Mike Smith being departed from the team. Of course, his new backup is Cam Talbot. And I believe with the expectations going into the season for the Flames goalie tandem is that Riddick play around 60 games and uh, Talbot playing around 22 or so to really lighten the load. But really, David Riddick is in a position where he can take his game to another level. I feel if the Flames would have played him more so in the playoffs, that they would have had a better opportunity to win. Uh, I really think he is their goaltender of the future. He still has some more improvement to make. And I think he can elevate things even further and really solidify himself as a regular starting goaltender and one of the top ones around around the NHL. Next up, we have another young goaltender, Mackenzie Blackwood of the New Jersey Devils. Now, we saw Blackwood play last year um, basically out of necessity due to a lot of injuries within the Devils organization at their goaltending position. Of course, Corey Schneider's missed a lot of time. Uh, Keith Kincaid missed some time last year before he was departed from the organization. Uh, now, this year's tandem is likely going to be Schneider and Blackwood, and I do think Blackwood could very well outplay Corey Schneider, take over the starting job, and really break through as being another major piece to that franchise who already has some pretty big-time cornerstones being built around the team, like Nico Heischer, Jack Hughes, Taylor Hall. Uh, they built, you know, built around the defense this year, adding P.K. Subban. And now they're going to have Mackenzie Blackwood really break through. And I think he can really show here that he can be the starting goaltender for the immediate future for the Devils and really get this team moving in the right direction. I fully suspect Mackenzie Blackwood to end up playing 45 to 50 games and likely taking over the number one starting spot from Corey Schneider. Next up, we have Dallas Stars forward Rupe Hintz, who really, in my opinion, 
opinion, really showed a lot of people last year just how good he was, especially in the second half of the year and into the playoffs. He certainly had a bit of a breakthrough season last year, you could say, but I do think he's going to take things even further for the coming season. The Dallas Stars are another team I feel like improved a fair bit here during the offseason, and I think a player like Hintz is going to help them take it an even another bigger step forward with some more improved play. I really think he's going to find himself having some stronger line mates, playing a bigger role, and really breaking out more so offensively. By the end of last season, Hintz was a player who was starting to take that pressure off that top line a little bit, and certainly will continue to do that for the coming year. I do think he's going to be a big part of the Dallas Stars future, and I really expect him to really improve his game and really take things up another notch for the coming year. Now, next up, the player I feel is most likely going to have the biggest breakthrough season is young defenseman for the Avalanche, Samuel Girard. Now, I think it's fair to say Girard had a pretty solid year last year for the Avalanche. It's another young defenseman, Kale McCarr, joined the team. Those two players playing together on a defense pairing in the playoffs were dynamite. I think they could very well be the top pairing for the Avalanche for many years to come. They are incredibly fun to watch. They're both incredibly quick, have a lot of offensive talent, and I really think that Girard is really going to be able to take his game up another notch this year. Not only did the experience from last year be a big help, another year of maturity, another year of growth, but have him playing with a guy like McCarr, it's just going to help him really show his skills and really improve a lot much more for the coming year. Those two guys, like I said, are going to be incredibly fun to watch. The Avalanche are likely going to have one of the top blue lines around the NHL in the short term once all these younger defensemen make their way into the NHL, get the necessary experience to really start getting closer to their top potential here. But I really like the game of Samuel Girard. I really expect him to take some major steps forward and be a huge part of the Avalanche blue line for many years to come. Those are my top 10 players. I expect to have major breakthroughs seasons and really elevate their play over what we've seen so far here in the recent past. Let me know what you think of these players and any other players you feel deserve to be on this list and you can see breaking through for the upcoming 2019-2020 NHL season. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching and I will catch you next time. <laughs>